Hello and welcome to the Friday Afternoon Projects where I try to do something absolutely bloody stupid in the space of just a single Friday afternoon and I've decided to start with creating a toy language, toy programming language using nothing more than Python and the LLVM bindings to Python. LLVM is of course an exciting uh, technology that things like Clang are built on which makes writing uh, sort of JITs and compilers pretty easily, pretty easy rather and Python is of course another programming language. Now I'm going to try and do this pretty much from scratch using nothing more than Python and LLVM and uh, I'll be using IPython to develop it so for you to see what's going on there. So I'm pretty much not going to leave a web browser and I'm going to try and write everything myself which is mad. Um, obviously I'll cut down the boring bits where I don't know what I'm doing and um, also when I'm trying to read web pages slowly but apart from that uh, it should be quite fun. Right, the first part is going to be <coughs> lexical analysis. Now I don't know if any of you have ever made a programming language before, probably not, but the Wikipedia page will tell you everything you need to know about lexical analysis, but if you look at the Wikipedia page on compilers you'll see that the first thing that normally happens is you take some sort of language in, it goes through a lexical analyzer and then a parser and generates some intermediate code. And so that's what I'll be doing and hopefully LVM will do everything from here onwards. So what do I mean by lexical analysis? It's essentially taking your source code of your uh, program and turning it into the fundamental tokens, the fundamental things that you're going to give the parser. So let's fire up a new project and an IPython. So this is just using the secure shell extension for Google Chrome. So I type in my super secret password. Right. Also got this little program called Keymon down here, which should show you uh, what I'm actually typing, which is quite useful. So let's uh, first of all load up Tmux, which is allows me to sort of resume this session should I fail, uh, and let's create a new Git repository for this. So I store my Friday afternoon projects under the uh, Friday folder, and let's call this Toy Language. Spelled correctly would be lovely. Boom. Right, so we're going to use Python. There's a great little uh, program called Virtual End, which lets you do all the installation and playing with Python entirely in a directory without messing anything else up. So we'll use that. Right, that's done. Um, so we activate that like this. And now, you see, Python is actually the special version of Python I've got installed on here. Oops. That's not what I meant to do. Look, there we are. We'll be using Python 3, 3.3. Um, hopefully, everything that I need to do will be Python 3 compatible. If not, we might find that part 3 or 4, we suddenly have to port everything back to Python 2. But for the moment, we'll try and be modern about it. Eh? So let's install IPython. And the web notebook requires PyZMQ, or ZMQ, I suppose, if you're uh, from across the pond. And it also needs Tornado, which is a web server. <sighs> right, that's all installed. So that means that uh, I should be able to run IPython now. So I'm going to run IPython. I think it's IPython 3. I'm going to use the web notebook. I'm going to ask it not to open a web browser because um, I'm already in a web browser and it will try to open it actually on the local machine I've logged into, and uh, not this machine. Um, I'm also going to use the script option. What that will do is every notebook I create, it will save a Python version of it next to it, which is great because I'll be able to import that from a different notebook. So I'll be able to do it in stages. I just remembered I also need to have the IP option so it knows to uh, try to bind to that IP address. That URL there should work. Based. Go. Woohoo! I'm going to create a new notebook and I'm call this uh, Lexing. So it's going to be flexible analysis and let's give it a title like that. Right, and I'll add a little sort of uh, note to the top of the file telling me what it's going to be doing and what I'm going to try and do. So um, let's type a quick example of the sort of source I'm wanting to generate to be able to pass. Let's 
something like that would be a pretty simple expression. Uh, that's just um, an algebraic expression. And I'll uh, try to get to the point where I can at least get the tokens out of this to begin with. And then we'll see if we can analyze, uh, extend the lexical analyzer further in later parts. <coughs> Let's uh, define the tokens we're going to have. So what tokens are we going to have? No, let's create a class because then we can uh, make it just like pseudo enum sort of thing. Right, we're going to create a, um, a class attribute called underscore underscore defs, which is going to have um, the actual token definitions in. And the token definition is going to be a tuple, which contains the actual type name some form of pattern which is going to match it and some way of converting that pattern into a value so obviously with the the integer that's just going to be the the built-in int function which is going to take the, the value of 10 to a, a number so so like an integer that's the type name the, the pattern maybe oh let's use rear expression so we need to import value. And a um, integer is any digit followed by, well, one or more digits, pretty much. That's pretty simple. And then a callable, which will take a string providing integer and return the integer. Well, that's just built in int callable, will do it. Cool. Um, I think actually I would, I'd rather make that into its own type. So it's quite a token def. And then we can use the, the very cool um, named tuple thing from the collections module. Um, so a token def. Right, so a token definition is its name, a pattern that matches it, and a value filter. Let's make a note about that. Right, little note saying what we uh, define a token to be. There we go. I think I want to be able to have just normal um, strings as patterns as well, rather than just relying on regexes. So let's add one for both. So this simple one we're going to be having asterisks, pluses, minus signs. Uh, we'll probably have a slash there as well at some point. Uh, and we want these brackets. So we're going to need to be able to parse all of those. Um, and we probably want to add in a white space token as well, because I want to be able to add in spaces like, like this and not have it matter. So let's try that. Let's add those in. Right. So I've got my defs in this this token type um, class, but I want to expose them as attributes. So let's write a little sort of dirty little loop that will do that. Oh, of course, because um, double underscore is name mangled. That's what I should do. And single underscore. There we go. Um, so now I should be able to... Cool, okay. So I'm going to use uh, this sort of thing as, as the actual thing to do. So I'll, uh, if I'm going to compare the type of, into, of a token that comes in like this, I can, if token, I can use the is operator, which is going to be a lot faster than trying to do sort of equality comparison. Um, one thing I just thought might be useful is if I don't make token, if I make token desk print something a bit more useful out there rather than sort of this huge regular thing here. I mean, I, I don't really care about that. Um, so perhaps actually I might make token def print itself out as token type dot. It's a bit mucky, but there we go. So let's make token def actually a subclass of this. Right, okay, so now if I do this and print out token type dot integer. Ah. There we go. So that, that'll make it look really nicer to print out and see what's going on. Right, so that's to find all the token types going to be using. So I want to be able to um, see what token is at the front of a string. So I shall uh, add a little function that will take a, a string, some points to start searching in it, and look for the uh, the first token that matches out of this list. I'll do it first token, so that instead of longest token, I think. I think longest token is at least... Um, 
consistent. Doesn't matter then if we reorder this. Um, nothing surprising will happen, right? So we'll do longest token. Right, not the best description ever, but it kind of gets the job done. Um, and we need to define a token type. So I'm going to say that's uh, it's definitely going to be a subclass of name tuple. A type, a value, um, and let's have it as a location, as in it will have a um, slice, the slice within the, the string that it came from, just so that we can print it out again if necessary. Right, the first taken thing, uh, let's keep, let's maintain um, the token we're going to return, which is currently none. And then loop over all definitions. So definition is a name pattern uh, filter, value filter. And we want, oh, is before. And we want to try and match the start of the text against that pattern. So um, actually, we need to find the match text. It's going to be that text starting from the start point. We can slice that. It's no problem. Nice and easy with a Python uh, slicing syntax. And um, so pattern can be one of two things. It could be basically uh, a string or a, a regex. I th think. Maybe we want to possibly allow none as a pattern as well. That way uh, we can have some sort of special tokens down here, like sort of um, later on if we have some sort of more exciting tokens like uh, um, indent start or, or something like that if we're doing more exciting language. So let's let's um, let's try to define a head and, and make pattern optional as well. So we'll just skip anything which is on non 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 pattern. So if it's a uh, pattern is just a string, we just want to see if it matches the, the start of the text. So that's easy. We can do that with start script. Um, otherwise, it should be a regex. So let's see if we can match it. And if there's no match, then we. Um, right. So if it matches the pattern, then obviously match value is just the pattern itself. Uh, and if it's a regex, the match value is the actual matched text, which I think you get from the group uh, method on, re on, rege on regexes. I think that's right. I think that should give us the actual match text. Right, so um, if you've got here, we've matched the thing. So, So we'll actually have token text as being the uh, the actual text match token because of course we want to be filtering the value um, via the match filter later on. So keep going if we've got a longer token already. Okay, so we need to open, update the current token and the current token text. Hit tab there to remind myself what this takes. It takes a type, a value, and a slice. Uh, the type, ah, right, okay, actually, the type we need, need it here. So. Let's call this type. Now, what else do we take? The might turn the slice. All right, so the slice is from the start to. Uh, That's, that's correct, isn't it? Yep. Right number of brackets. One, two, one, seven, eight, three. There we go. Right. Okay. Um, 
that should return none if it doesn't match as well. So let's just check. Oh, the empty string should be nothing actually. Yep, prints nothing. Uh, that should be an integer, presumably. Yeah. Uh, and if we make that a two digit integer. Yep. And it should also just ignore anything off the side there. Yep. Okay. And then plus. Yeah. Okay. That looks to be working. Um, so now the lex um, function is just going to be a generator. They're going to have a generator that just uh, takes some text and keeps calling first token um, to um, return all the, the tokens in the text. That should be pretty simple. So let's try that. So um, let's call this lex raw because I'm actually going to, I think I might chain these. So for, I'm definitely going to want to have a, a filter that drops any white space, for example. So I think I'm going to have the, the, the ultimate flexing function do something like that so I can tell which is the ultimate lexing function. Yeah, let's call it lex rule. So actually we'll break out of the because we'll keep doing it. Otherwise, um, oh, we need to keep a, oh no. Oh, hang on. All right, we need to keep a, a track of the starting index, that's right. So if um, if len text, uh, if, if we're actually there, so if start is, is greater than or equal to, I don't know how it would be greater than, but um, if it gets there, then we should break out. Otherwise, we need to get the next token. So that can be equals first token from text, starting from the start. Um, so in fact, we just need to yield that. Um, and then we need to update our start location. Oh, so we do need to record the token, actually. And so then we just add the length of... Um, oh, we just in fact just set ourselves equal to the, the stop point of the token. So token dot... Is it location? No, slice. Isn't it? Token dot slice dot... Right, that should work. Um, so it keeps going through, gets a token, it's taken. As soon as we get past the end of the text, we break out. Gosh, that's quick. Is that, so is that going to work? So let's just check. So if I type 8 plus 7 divided by 6 minus 8, in brackets like this, I'll of course get a generator, and then we'll wrap it in a list so we actually see what generates. Well, there we go, we get an integer, we get some white space plus white space. Da, 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 da. Okay, and then we'll save this as text rule. So um, let's check that it works with our simple source. There. So uh, let's find a function. Okay, so um, let's at the bottom of this file always have a check of writing some sort of non trivial amount of source code that Lexa should be able to pass. Alright, so that's some real source. That's the selecting of it. Well, that looks pretty sensible. Okay, uh, so we've got a basic Lexa in place. Next time we'll attempt to take the, the lex tokens and generate some sort of parse tree that actually represents this expression so we can see if we can actually evaluate it. And of course I forgot that I need to of course commit this. So let's uh, create a new window here in our, in our shell. So we need to, let's where are we? Right. Um, I don't want to have that VN in the, in the git so I'll Right. Okay, now we're done. Could join me in part two for when we try to start to write the parser for these expressions.